Like, Bolt's race were not amazing to watch. We were just trying to see, is he going to break the record? But this was an amazing race because of, like, I didn't know who, who won. Your boy did it. Your boy did it, man. And you have to credit how he did it. Because your boy did this where he lost his heat. He lost his semifinal. So he was coming under huge pressure. So losing your heat, losing your semifinal, guys like... So even coming into the race, he was not one of the favorites based on the heat and the semifinal. And to have an okay start, to be behind... And my Lord in heaven. Wow. Wow. I mean, I'm going to get back to why this is such a great 100 meter race. It's to do with the balls. Basically, I thought, I think it's, it's something Tom Thompson. I thought, I thought he won. So to the naked eye, it seemed he won. Hence why he celebrated how he won. But then I was like, no, that's close. Because I was like, okay, I think he won, but... It's not as clear as when it was freaking bolt. So I was like, yo, 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 what, what the heck? Um, so it and if you look at it closely, because remember, so basically, so see, I'm like an athletics guru because look, I've been athletes with this. So there's a guy, go Google, Google a guy called Colin Jackson. He was a hodler, 110 meter hodler for Team G GB. So what they teach you in running, because basically I used to do 100 and 200, is lean with your head. So Forget the feet, forget the knees. The first part of your head to reach the finishing line finishes. So you can see, oh yeah, so the Jamaican guys, his foot, foot is ahead. But no, if the first part of your head goes, so that's why they say at the finishing line, you do this. So if you look at Colin Jackson, he was amazing and just really stretching his neck and doing that because it's not your feet, your knees. The first parts of your head that touches the finishing line, that is what they use to de determine who the winner is. So if you can look closely, if you can zoom in, you can see that it is the guy's, um, Lyle's head is the first to reach the finishing line ahead of the Jamaican sprinter and all the other sprinters. So an amazing race by Lyle's. An absolutely freaking amazing race by Lyle's for the fact that he was able to do this. So it was an amazing race. But look, we've got to give, we've got to give the ladies some love. We've got to give the ladies some love. Well done. Well done. Guys, um, if you don't know, let me let me even let me even pull this up for you. Let me even pull, pull this up for you right now. So, Saint Lucia, island near the Caribbean. So, before I put this, guess how guess the population of Saint Lucia? Just guess, just guess. I know you say oh, three million, two million, a million. No, no, no. Go lower. <laughs> okay. 500,000. Lower. 300,000? No, lower. 179,000 people. That's obviously the census of 2022. They don't even have up to 200,000 people. This is not only St. Lucia's first gold medal. This is St. Lucia's first medal ever amazing shout out to alfred absolutely amazing absolutely freaking amazing and was all right but no no absolutely amazing um but what makes this even crazier is this is this has really been dominated by the jamaican athletes so if you look at it so um oh so um beijing 08 shelly and fraser london 20 yeah london 2012 shelly and fraser again um rio 2016 um, Elaine Thompson, um, Tokyo 2020, Elaine Thompson. So the Jamaicans have dominated for the past four Olympics. So it's been fully dominated by, by the Jamaicans. So but I think it was Shari Richardson, the American runner, who was um, tipped to, to win. But again, shout out to Julian Alfredman, um, breaking the Jamaican 100 meter streak. So absolutely amazing. And guys, if you can, I wish I had the video. I think you could, sorry, you could even go and find it online. Go and look at people in St. Lucia reacting because imagine for an island that small of like 100 and just under 180,000 people for an island that small to not only see your little island, not only win a medal, 
win a freaking gold medal i can't like i would say it's just, it's just such an amazing thing to watch and this is why the olympics are so beautiful we love football like football that's our sport and that's my sport we love it but as much as we love football there's something really truly special about the olympics and Olympics has always been something special. Hence where whenever the Olympics go, I always watch, which is why I'm angry because I actually missed this. So I mess with the time because I always I always watch the 100 meter men, 100 meter women, 200 men, 200 women, four by one men, four by one woman. Those are the, those are the I try and watch the other ones, but the ones that I always see, I must watch them is 100 meters for men and women, 200 meters for men and women, four by one for men and women, because those are, because those are my sports. And those are the things I did because I was a 100 minute runner, 20 runner, four by one. And I always watched the men and women's race. So I'm angry I didn't, that I missed this one. But yeah, shout out to Hartman. Absolutely amazing. And again, 100, 180,000 people. That is insane. That's absolutely insane. And I always like it when a shock happens. But let's go back to the main guy, man. Um, shout out to him, man. You see, so I'm. I, so my 100 meter thing started with Carl Lewis, which I think was, was that Barcelona 92? Then it transitioned to Maurice Green, and then he had Justin Gatlin, who, you know what, and everything. But the real domination was your boy. Like, we've never seen dominance like this at the 100 meters, like Usain Bolt. And Usain Bolt is very particular because this, and I think it was my uncle, who, was it either my uncle or someone said this to, to me? If a tall athlete with long strides can perfect 100 meters, they would be un, unbeatable. So the issue was, so I think Bolt used to be a 200 runner. So he was better over longer distances. But they said that, you know, because his strides are so long and he's so, so tall and lanky, he can't get the rapid movements of like a Morris Green, a Carl Lewis, um, or even line like, you know, allows. But once Bolt actually perfected how to actually make his long strides rapid, quick, and actually maintain the right composure, oh, it was un unbeatable. So a guy of his frame, 100 meters, it's hard because every stride he takes is two more than the regular guy based on his long strides. But he had to perfect how to do that over 100 meters and how to run a 100 meter race as a tall guy with long strides. And once he perfected that, so we were never watching the 100 meters to see if Usain Bolt would win. We were watching it to see whether he's going to break the world record because one of the amazing things to watch is when you actually see a world record break live. And I've seen this like a few times. So because again, the this is the reality here. I feel that the World Cup is huge and football is the biggest sport in the world. There are people who don't like football. Yes, there are people on this planet who don't give a damn about football. Every human being on this planet wants to know how fast can a man run. It's just a fact. So there are people who don't like football. I don't think there's any person on this planet who isn't curious to know how fast can a human being run over 100 meters? Can a human being actually run under nine seconds? It was fascinating when a human being broke 10 seconds. So the 100 meters will always be fascinating to see how fast can a human being actually run. That is something that is universal to everybody and far more universal than, oh, how many times can a guy put a ball inside a fish net? We love football because we love how it is and the different nuances. But on a very basic term, globally, the 100 meter race is the most fascinating sporting event in the world. You know, next to perhaps maybe boxing because we like seeing people hit hit each other people. But I feel that what we have now is far better. Cause this this was a, this was an amazing race. Like Bolt's race were not amazing to watch. We were just trying to see is he gonna break the record. But this was an amazing race because of like I didn't know who who won. And it was like, man, anybody could win. So this was generally an amazing race. Um and I know how it feels when um to run because see, whenever you're running 100 meters. You want lane six or five. You want the middle lane. You don't want lane eight or lane one. That's horrible. Now, on 200 meters, that's a bit of a difference based on the, the, the bend. But for 100 meters, you want to go six, five, four, the middle lanes. Six, five, or four. That's, that's, that's what you want. So he was actually in a, I think he was in lane six. Yeah, yeah Laos was in lane six, I think. 
Yeah, six, yeah, six, 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 seven, six. So this was great to watch because now the Honor Mrs. is now far more fascinating because I think it's far more better when you don't know who's going to win. When they're like, oh, he's going to win, he's going to win. Bro, Bolt won with like about 30. By the time 80% of the, no, by the time 70% of the race was done, Bolt already won. So I think this is even much more fascinating. So again, credits to Laos where he was under pressure. Guys are like, oh, talk, talk, talk. He backed up the talk up. And even when he came out, I was like, he's doing a bit too extra, he's doing too much. But under pressure, he talked a lot and he backed up and is now an Olympic gold medal winner, which is huge. But there's one more thing before we go. Um. <laughs> World champion of what? <laughs> I want poetry. See, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Let me be clear. It's not going to happen. It will not happen. It will not happen because the I still feel that if the U.S. basketball team put their best players, they're the most unbeatable sports team on planet Earth. It's impossible. You can't beat them. If they put their second team, they still have to beat, but they're beatable. They, the U.S. basketball team, if they put their best team, no team on planet Earth can beat them. They are unbeatable. And especially what LeBron, what LeBron is doing now, it is insane. No, like Steph Curry is a cheat code. You have Kevin Durant coming off the bench. LeBron is going crazy. They're, they can't be beat. But with Noah Lyles getting his gold medal and him saying rightfully that, no, all because you win your NBA champion, you can't call yourself world champion. It doesn't matter whether the best players in the world play in the NBA. No, you have to play against other people in the world. That's how it works. So the NBA, that is an American league. So when you're now coming to the Olympics or you're now playing to FIBA, that is now the world, that is now global. Of course, you expect to win, but win. So once you win, then you can call yourself world champions. You don't get to call yourself world champions <laughs> if you win the NBA. Do you know what was funny? Baseball. The World Series, the World Series, the World Series. The best baseball player right now is Japanese. Whenever America used to now play people beyond America, they got their ass kicked by Cuba. Cuba used to beat the living crap out of them. So how are you calling it the World Series? Because you win it in America. But when, when you Americans now go and play against Cuba, Cuba will beat the living crap out of you. And the Japanese player is literally the best baseball player. <laughs> so again, it's just the crazy bubble mentality. But it would be hilarious if America don't win gold. That's would be hilarious, but it wouldn't happen. Like I'm, I don't know how America lose. It's 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 literally impossible. It the only way America lose the only way that they, they lose is if LeBron gets injured, Durant gets injured, and Curry gets injured. So like okay, let's say if Durant and LeBron get injured, then there's a chance. The team is still starts because you still got Devin Booker there, you've still got Tatum there, and you've still got Steph Curry there. But to give people a chance, LeBron, Durant injured. If they have no injuries and they have their full team, it's impossible. It's impossible. But it would be hilarious and it would be an epic emergency hangout if Noah Lyles got his gold medal and America don't win gold at this Olympics. It would be crazy, man. But shout out to your boy Lyles, man. 100% great, great, amazing race, man.